Do you know what it's like to have the only copy of something in the world? Well, that's the case with this tape, Beat the Crusher. It doesn't look like much, does it? Some people have discovered priceless jewels and unimaginable riches, but I get stuck with the only recording of a bizarre game show that hardly anyone remembers. So what was Beat the Crusher? Well, in the late 90s, satellite TV just kept growing and growing, offering more channels and more choice to go with it. Much like today where everyone has a streaming service, back then almost everyone had their own TV channel. If you had Sky at the time, it could take you an hour just to look through all the channels. But if you had more channels, that meant you had to create more content, so even the most absurd ideas could be turned into shows for consumption on satellite TV. That was the case with Beat the Crusher, which was commissioned to be shown on the TV channel Sky One in January of 1999, on Fridays at 8. It only lasted for 10 episodes, and after only a few months, the show just vanished, never to be seen again. That would explain why footage of this show is so hard to come by. It's listed on the Lost Media Wiki as being partially found, and well, that's because I'm the only one who has a copy of it. I've had this tape since I was about two years old, and whenever I wanted to melt my brain with strange disturbing imagery, this was always the tape I'd watch. Now, I know what you're thinking. How weird could a forgotten game show possibly be? Well, let's stick this tape into our trusty VHS recorder and see for ourselves. It starts off with one of those old Sky One items, where a bunch of people are playing Kaplunk for some reason. I guess that kind of randomness sets the tone for the show itself, where the intro features the host of the show climbing into a giant car crusher and driving around like absolute maniacs. Okay, I'll admit it, I would have liked to do this as a kid. Drive around in a massive vehicle crunching cars under the wheels. But I think this guy is taking it just a bit too seriously. Look at his eyes, look at that wild stare. He isn't just out to crush cars, he probably wants to crush your soul as well. Turns out this is the main host of the show, the late Freddy Starr, a stand-up comedian best known for his rather anarchic form of comedy, and also an infamous tabloid newspaper headline where it was once claimed that he ate someone's hamster. Now, obviously this wasn't true, but it didn't stop them from working the story into the actual marketing of Beat the Crusher, which featured ads with the giant Godzilla Freddy stomping around town and gulping down someone's car. It's the monster of all game shows. Beat the Crusher. Fight Sky One. Freddy is, shall we say, an unhinged sort of man. Apparently driving that crusher around has just made him go insane, and now he's developed some kind of depraved crushing fetish that he can no longer resist. Oh God, I want to crush something! So he takes it out on the audience by grabbing a man's glasses and squashing them in his bare hands. Crush ya, crush ya, crush ya. There's a new headline for you, Freddy Star Crushed My Glasses. The only person who can tame Freddy's destructive perversions is the co-host, Melinda Messenger, a woman best known at the time for, well, a different kind of perversion. She explains the gist of the show. Two couples from our audience chosen at random will be trying to beat the crusher. The losers will have their car crushed and the winners will be going home in either a brand new luxury state car or a very stylish executive four-door saloon. Yes, that's right. This is a show where they would actually crush your car if you lost. The show even had its own special chant. Crusher, crusher, crusher. But forget the actual rules, most of the show is dedicated to Freddy's psychotic episode where he picks out members of the audience that he wants to torment with sick, twisted games. Kind of like a British Joker or a more brightly coloured jigsaw. He starts off with Peter Evans, who seems like a nice enough chap, but Freddy holds his precious garden shed hostage on the crusher and threatens to destroy it unless he sings a song. You've got to sing one of your favourite songs. And if, it, and if you don't, I'm, I promise you, I will put your shed in the crusher, I promise you. Shadow on the wall tells me the sun is going down. Oh, well, at least he actually did it. Surely Freddy will show some mercy on this man now and spare his lovely shed. It's going in! <laughs> that lovely 
garden shed. Wow, he really is a sadist. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, maybe it was just a copy of his shed that they crushed. But no, turns out a viewer actually complained about this incident at Ofcom, the regulatory authority for television in the UK. Basically, they decide what is and isn't appropriate to be shown on TV. In their June 1999 bulletin, it's confirmed that they did indeed crush this man's shed, because his wife asked them to do it. Apparently, they did compensate him afterwards, but something tells me this is one marriage that might just have ended in a divorce. But Freddy doesn't stop with garden sheds and forces three men to take part in a new challenge to find the coolest man. What does this have to do with crushing cars? Who cares? I just don't want Freddy to crush me. Freddy tries to interview the men, but he acts so strangely here that I'm not even sure what he's doing. And now, um, do you think... Do you... <laughs> what is that? So while Freddy continues his thorough interview, the men are hooked up to heart monitors and Melinda starts reading a scary story. The man with the lowest heart rate at the end wins. Three brave, courageous, stupid young men decide to spend the night in an old haunted house. But Freddy decides to write his own draft of the story by smacking the men over the head. I'm sorry. Does it hurt? It's all right. Pouring ice down their crotches. And, and down the front of his trousers. And then splattering them with tomato ketchup. Before licking it off. I can't say I remember that bedtime story growing up. One of them is the winning loser anyway, and we're released into the safety of an ad break. This is usually the treat when it comes to old tapes, but even the ads are weird on this one. Like, check out this car ad, where a guy jumps out of a building and turns into an anvil before pulling a baby out of his pocket. Must be Freddy's brother or something. Then there's this one with an ice cream man shortchanging everyone. I bet that's Freddy's cousin. But time for part two, where Freddy threatens this surfer dude into putting on a wetsuit in 30 seconds, otherwise he'll cut his bodyboards in half with a chainsaw. Okay. Does he make it? No, of course not. He runs out of time and we get the Freddy Chainsaw Massacre. That's my favourite one. Was that your favourite one? <laughs> not anymore, it's not. But is there a prize for surfer dude? Some kind of reward for watching his pride and joy getting cut into pieces? Nope, he just has to go back to his seat and cut his losses. No pun intended. Just in case you think things couldn't get any more bizarre, now Melinda introduces a completely different segment, Babies Win Prizes. Because when I think crushing cars, I think of toddlers trapped in one of those cramped play areas from the 90s. What's even going on here? Where is this? Why is the referee dressed like a Dalmatian? Well, basically, the idea is that the kids have to humiliate their parents and complete a bunch of challenges in order to win one of those big toy cars. And because the prize is a car, I guess that technically makes it relevant to the show, but that's a tenuous link if ever there was one. The challenges involve throwing pies in the parents' faces, riding them like horses to lasso cans, and even dressing them up like clowns. Though, to be honest with you, everyone in this show is pretty much a clown. Thankfully, the kids take a nap, and Freddy is back with yet another evil plan. This time, he's forced two families to compete against each other in some kind of messed up talent show, where the judges are shepherds for some reason? Melinda introduces us to the families, and oh, there's Uncle Wayne! I'm Wayne, and I'm gonna be dancing. You're gonna be dancing? Fantastic! <laughs> and something again, you practice at home in your bedroom, maybe? That's it, right, yeah. <laughs> Well, he's not really my uncle, but he is a relative. So that's why we have this tape. My parents must have recorded it so they could watch him, and somehow it fell into my hands. Another VHS mystery solved. As for the talent show, these are some weird acts. Some of them do normal things like singing, but then you have some of the most disturbing material I've ever seen. <laughs> Thankfully, my side of the family has a bit more sense, and one woman sings such a good tune that Freddie actually joins her in a duet. I love that song. Could you play it again? Oh, 
He doesn't stay in a good mood for long, though, especially once these girls come out and start playing the xylophone. Freddy does give them quite a detailed review, though. That was crap! Finally, it's Uncle Wayne's turn, so what does he have for us? Wow, this guy can move. Freddy's so impressed he even compliments him. Come on! That was so unfair! He was good, him! He was great! He was great! Yes, that's right. Freddy Star spared one of my relatives. He must be the only person on this show that he didn't put in the crusher. So what's next? More babies win prizes! This time it's a force feeding contest where the parents have to stuff lump after lump of cold, mushy food into their gullets. How's that for a gobful of cake? Oh, and the commentator makes appropriate childcare comments. If the little blighters don't eat their meals, break their toys and lock them in their bedrooms. That'll teach them a lesson. Must be Freddy's uncle. Oh, she's not, is she? No, no. Oh! Do we get the car crushing now? Nope, more ads. Probably a bad choice to put a Sky ad in the middle of all this madness, but then it's followed up with one of the scariest ads of my entire childhood, where a mosquito flies into a man's house in the middle of the night, and then this happens. Oh. My. God. That was like the first ever jump scare as a kid. No wonder it put me off booze for life. Funny how only in the next ad does the sound get muted though, just to torture me further. That said, there is a certain charm to seeing things like the old mute and volume controls from 90s TV. Just another relic from the past. Finally, it's time for the actual point of the show. Beat the Crusher. Crusher! 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 crusher. Of course, with Freddy involved, there are no volunteers. He's written down all the license plates in the car park and picks out two at random to play the final game. Now it's getting tense. The two couples are ready to go, but first, more babies win prizes! Ugh. At least it's the final round, which is basically just a giant obstacle course for the two last kids to race through. Go! And off go Joni Dawn and her dad, full of confidence. They won the car and they're doing their very best to win it. If I were four years old, this would have been quite fun actually, with the climbing frame and the little tyke's playhouse and everything. Happy days. The girl wins the toy car anyway, while the boy probably gets a one-way trip to the crusher. And now, the final challenge. Both couples' cars are in position beside the crusher, and now they have to answer questions in order to win a brand new car. Now, Freddy and I will each in turn ask you a question. Get the question right, and your opponent's car goes up a level. Get the question wrong, and your car goes up a level. Who has spent the more weeks at number one in the charts? Was it Rod Stewart or Slade? Slade. Okay, well the answer is... Slade! Oh, Slade! Your car goes up another level! Your car's on the... Russia! 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 Which European country was the first to drink tea? Was it Britain or Holland? Britain. I'm sorry, it was Holland. Russia. Russia, You're both on Russia, level four! Russia, Russia, Russia. Eventually, it's neck and neck, with one final question to decide who gets a new car and who gets crushed. Which film ends, after all, tomorrow is another day? Is it Casablanca or is it Gone with the Wind? Gone with the Wind. Oh, I can't look. I can't look. Okay. Well, the answer to the question is. Yes! Finally! I've sat through an hour of Freddy's psychotic ramblings, and now I get to see a car being crushed into pieces. Ah, uh, this is the moment now! Where the car goes in to the crusher, watch your car meet its death! I've already long since lost my mind, I might as well get into it now. Crusher! 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 Crush! Eh? Uh? No! No! Not again! How cruel is that? It was one thing on that Cartoon Network tape not to see the end of that Dexter cartoon, but now right at the end, this show cuts out? It's just torture. The car's right there, right on the edge of being dropped into oblivion, and someone thought it was a bright idea to tape over it with the start of another episode? Thanks for nothing, Dad. Okay, so the whole thing starts all over again. Freddy is back in a completely different location this time, and he still has the hots for crushing. The only person who really understands 
understand me, ladies and gentlemen, is the Crusher! Yes, the Crusher will be doing what it does best, crushing cars. And there's its little hors d'oeuvre. Be warned! He finds an innocent Italian man, vaporizes his mobile kebab shop, and then proceeds to get all smoochy smoochy with him. <laughs> it's funny because he lost his only source of income. Looks like we have to put up with another coolest man contest, and... Wait, what? Where are we now? What's going on? This VHS is like a trip deeper and deeper into some other dimension. It keeps cutting out and taking me to all these weird places. No wonder this was like taking drugs as a child. So apparently Dad has taped over Beat the Crusher with something else, and now we're in the middle of another ad break on a film channel called Sky Movie Max. It starts off well with an ad for the adult channel, causing Dad to change the channel for a few seconds, probably because he thought he might have tuned into something a little bit naughty by accident. You can tune into the adult channel from midnight till 4am for only 4 99 per night. Go on, get spicy after midnight. That's funny. Freddy's legacy does linger on though, since these ads are pretty screwed up as well. A loving couple get into a fight over oven chips. Give me some. No, I'm sweet. No, no. McKinnon home fries. You just can't help yourself. John Malkovich threatens a toy bunny. Make a move and the bunny gets it. And this man drives through a black and white animation land. Why should you drive the new Shogun? Well, for starters, the high tensile steel body gives a real feeling of security. Actually, sometimes I'd watch this tape before bed, and this is usually the last thing I'd see before falling asleep, so the visuals here are just kind of stuck in my head. And the multi-mode ABS is one of the most advanced braking systems on the road. So if you'd like to move up to a Shogun, look for this sign. Time for a movie, anyway, and all I can say is that movie channels definitely looked a lot cooler back then. Look at all this crazy imagery. I feel like grabbing a giant box of popcorn already. It certainly puts you in the mood. But this is where our journey has to end, because if I keep watching this any longer, I think I'm gonna wake up on another planet. So yeah, the Beat the Crusher tape. What a ride. I mean, between Psycho Freddy and all the sick adverts, it's almost hard to know what to make of this one. It was unexplainable as a kid, and it's still unexplainable now. And let me tell you, I want answers. Like what did happen to that couple who had their car crushed anyway? Well, thanks to a YouTube comment by Dave, one of the contestants, we do have an explanation, which you can read in full here. Apparently, the whole process of selecting the cars at random was never random at all, with both pairs of contestants being selected beforehand. Some of the question answers were highly dubious, and on the very last question, Freddy actually gave hints to the winning couple so they'd pick the right answer, since Dave's car was more valuable and, being brand new, more entertaining to crush for higher ratings. Once their car was crushed, they were completely stranded without any way of getting back home. But once Dave made a complaint to the production team, they did arrange a taxi ride for them. With all that in mind, maybe it's easy to see why Beat the Crusher only lasted for 10 measly episodes, and thanks to Dad's misuse of the video recorder, we still don't have a single one of them in full. It has to be one of the weirdest game shows ever made, and if it wasn't for this dusty old tape, history might have consigned this piece of lost media to the Crusher. Thanks for watching this video, and look out for more VHS tapes coming soon. Are you enjoying the series? Do you have any thoughts? What tips would you like to see covered next? Let me know in the comments. Remember, you can vote for upcoming episodes in the community tab, and please like and subscribe to the Back to the Past YouTube channel for more outdated content coming soon. Is the most things that you you are afraid of snakes snakes mm -hmm. funny thing you should say that <laughs> <laughs> oh.